Hey guys, it's Wick. Um, it's been a, a, a little bit time working on this uh, Buffs uh, talk because uh, it's a big topic and I'm going to try to split it up small. Uh, some, some of it can't be, but uh, um, this one is pretty much my red pill lecture. Uh, when I think about Buffs, I, I can't think of one concept of the game that's more frustrating to me. Uh, seeing the way everybody talks about them, the way everybody preaches about them, the way everybody shares information about them feeling like they're completely and totally misunderstanding the concept of buffs. Um, let's, I'm going to start very basic. Um, first of all, what's a buff? What's a debuff? Um, buffs strengthen or enhance troops, traits, or performance. Debuffs weaken an enemy troop, traits, or performance. A lot of times people in the beginning of this game kind of have trouble understanding uh, which way that works. And I always try to imagine a, battle, a general on a battlefield, this guy in the middle being the main general. Uh, he shoot, and I, I, again, this is just a visual aid. I used to try to keep my, keep it straight in my mind. Imagine him standing at the battlefield with all of his soldiers in his back. And it's a little bit awkward. This is like a trick in medical school. When you try to remember something, you made it funny or weird and you never forgot it. So I imagine the main general standing at the battlefield with his soldiers at his back, staring at his enemy and he's shooting debuffs out of his eyes and he's crapping buffs out of his butt and the buffs are hitting his soldiers and the debuffs are shooting out like laser beams at the enemy, weakening the enemy in a way, some way, shape, or form. And the buffs um, are enhancing his soldiers, making him want to fight more, which something coming out of somebody's butt may make you angrier. So uh, I know that's a really weird analogy, but I guarantee you you're not going to forget it again. So when you have a general, their debuffs shoot forward and affect the enemy army on the battlefield. The buffs go backwards and go and affect all of the troops under his command. So remember, debuffs weaken, buffs strengthen. Whenever you have a rally, uh, I'm sorry, or a PvP solo, or a uh, your keep gets attacked and it's your main defense general or your, your PvP general with his... Uh, subgenerals, remember, when you bring subgenerals, the same rules apply. So when a subgeneral has a buff, they have tiny little armies. If you haven't ever looked, your sub cities only build one layer of each troop type at a time. They don't have 56 layers. You get three. Now, they get to bring those three layers. That's great as a layering technique. Uh, if anybody watched my layering video, you understand that's very important for diluting the enemy's attacks. Um, but what's even more important is those subgens have debuffs that also affect the same enemy army. This is why the debuff, the, the subgeneral uh, gen, the subgen like recommendations and the subgens all have debuffs because they're most effective at weakening your enemy since that affects the entire enemy army and their buffs only affect their tiny little sub armies. There is an epidemic failure within the game to understand what is really happening. And this leads people who run Major League Baseball teams to misjudge their players and mismanage their teams. One of my favorite movies, uh, one of my absolute favorite movies, and honestly sums up very nicely how frustrating it is. And, and what I, my intentions here, are just like this guy in this movie, to kind of shake up the norm and re uh, give everybody different perspective on the game and the way it works. So I'm going to play a little mind experiment here with you and I'm going to give you an option. And let's just say Mr. Wick shows up on your server and says, guess what? I've got two subs I can give you. And option one comes with an all troops attack buff 10%. The second sub I'm going to offer you gives you this. Archer marching attack, archer in city attack, archer monster attack, ground marching attack, ground in city, ground monster attack, marching, uh, mounted marching, etc., etc., siege marching, etc., city, it's a monster. So this is option number two, and I'm going to give you a choice. You can pick one or the other, and anybody who doesn't see buffs the same way I do right now is going definitely option two. Well, guess what? Those are the same buffs. Yeah, exactly. And whenever things have come up, and for some reason, I don't know if you want to call it marketing or a psych uh, experiment or what a perspective experiment, 
People see this and they go, meh, not really sexy, not worth it. And then they see this and they go, oh, yeah. You know, they've got, they've got, a, <laughs> they're like, they need new underwear because they've got, you've got, you know, they've got their panties all moist because they're looking at these buffs and going, holy shit. And I'm sitting there going, what the hell? Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel whenever I see people doing that. I see charts with generals. They've got uh, ranged attack on there. And I'm like, well, how much of that is qualified and how much of that is universal? So, right, we talk about universal buffs and qualified buffs and, and nobody really talks about it and, and understands it. So when you get to, I, I, I love this meme, by the way, um, you know, nobody cares. I talk to people, I'm like, what about, yeah, I talk about Civ gear. This one's universal. This one's qualified. This one's this, this one's that. Augustus, for instance, right? There's a lot of debuffs. The Sasanians that are up right now are all qual un uh, universal buffs. And everybody's like, oh, this one sucks. It's the worst. I'm like, this one's actually pretty good in so far. And, and we'll talk about it at the end of this lecture um, or talk. But again, it, 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 people aren't understanding it. So there's qualified versus universal buffs. The universal buffs are universally applied in all battle situations. Qualified buffs only apply to certain battle scenarios. These are them. There's in-city, which is also called defending with blazons. There's marching, also called attacking. There's in-rally and reinforcing and attacking monsters. Um, when, when attacking monsters, which is bosses' monsters. Um, again, when you're looking at a buff, if it doesn't have all any of these qualifications, or like Universal will say when he's leading, when the general's leading the army, they're always leading the army. That means it's always on. That's a universal buff. Or they just stop and they says range troop attack 10% or all troops attack 10%. That's a universal buff. It's not qualified. In other words, it doesn't need a certain quality to be met for it to be active. Those buffs in general of through the game from Blazons to famous cities or, or historics to gear, the developers have purposefully given you a choice and it's the choice is to find use the hyper qualified buffs in particular like in rally which are only useful in very very particular scenarios but are much higher or to go for the one that's universal much lower and this is what i want to ask you are you okay saying i'm just going to be a rally grunt and i'm not i'm not going to have that buff on defense because you're not going to have a lot of troops to rally with when you take a hit, you get port locked because the other guys are holding the ports and you're zeroed. Defense is important, and I'm going to go over that too. But for some reason, people just say, oh, it's just ranged attack. And people will put up a ranged rally attack with a report that shows a ranged buff of 2,600. And I'm going, okay, either they're mega coiners, because um, I, I spoke with one of my teammates at RSP. Uh, used just recently, and he just did the math that the highest possible ranged buff in the game right now is about 3,300. So these people are looking at 2,700, 2,800, and I'm going to look at it meaning either they're mega coiners, which I don't want to keep up with, or they're hyper qualified. They went four blazons for in rally ranged attack, which means that they've got jack shit on their keep on defense. So it's important to really, really understand universal buffs are always on. All of these scenarios, PvP solo, rallying as the runner or the grunt, defending the keep, your main keep, reinforcing an ally, reinforcing buildings and battlefield throne, barbs, pyramids, etc., and bosses and monsters, your universal buffs are on for all of these. So if you're going to go all universal, your buffs are going to be slightly lower, but they're always on. So essentially, the way to think of this is if you're going to go all universal, you're going to have a B minus, B plus keep, somewhere in the B range. If you go all hyper qualified, you're going to have an A plus rally attack. But you're going to have a, a D or a C minus defense. So the game makes you choose. And to be able to thread the needle and not choose and be effective on offense and effective on defense is a very, that's the art of the game. That's what, what dif that's the difference between the top 10 guys and all-stars is that one guy went heavier one way or the other. So buffs are important and they do significantly affect the outcome of any battle.
but universal generally are going to be a little bit lower in terms of you lose about maybe between 10 and 50% of the absolute value of the buff, but you get it on always. Marching buffs, also known as attacking buffs, are on whenever you do a solo PvP, you rally as a runner or grunt, or you're holding buildings. But it's off for in-city and boss mo bosses or monsters, which is why whenever I did this, this is those three. This is all three combined. So it's important to understand that if you don't understand that Universal is always on and marching is on, marching is considered to be the next best behind Universal. And if you look at Blazons, you'll see a percentage buff of um, the lowest number being the Universal buff. The next lowest being marching because it's on more often than not. And then you get to the hyper-specialized, which are in-city, AKA also known as in Blazons for defending buffs. They're on when you're in a city. This game's very literal. It's really weird um, the way that language works. When you're in a city, which means they are on for your troops when your main keep defense, but also when you're reinforcing allies. Your troops are in a city, but you're in your ally city. So in city actually is on when you're reinforcing an ally. Okay, that's really important that's for your troops. Now, the allies in city buffs do not affect your troops. Your in city buffs do not affect their troops. Remember my little picture with the general and the debuff shooting out of his eyes and his buff shooting out of his ass. This is how you're going to remember it. So the reinforcing your troops get the in city of an allies keep, keep, very important. In rally buffs, when you're rallying as a runner or a grunt, reinforcing buffs, which I should note, by the way, is important to understand that you're doing this, but you're also not bringing your subgenerals. These are hyper strong, but when rallies, you don't bring your subgenerals and their debuffs. So they have to be high because they're going to get debuffed by the main keeps subgenerals. So you're kind of almost really not getting a lot out of this. When I pick these up in Blazons, I chuck them. I'm still not done with my Blazons because I'm so picky. I'm aiming and gunning for defensive, marching, and universal. In my, I don't want to see in rally. I don't want to see reinforcing. Right? And lastly, reinforcing. It's only effective when you're reinforcing an ally's keep. That's it. So these are like the highest ones whenever you're doing your Blazons and upgrading them, but they're only on when you're reinforcing a keep. Now, that's interesting because it's very very small small part of the game but it's one of the most important parts of the game in battlefield because and i'm going to ask you very simply the last time you guys did battlefield watching this how many times did you reinforce or get reinforced yeah exactly so it's a pretty important part of battlefield and more and more i'm finding that the championship teams are embracing reinforcements as a philosophy reinforcements don't just work because you're throwing more troops in reinforcements work the most effectively because you're adding layers. I've had people reinforce me with 10,000 troop 56 layers. And they dilute out the attack immensely. Again, I have the layering video on all that. But remember, the ways to, to change layers, right? The way to alter layers is to do it through rallying team. That's all different layers. And reinforcements on defense. So rallying team on offense, reinforcements on defense, increased layers. That's a big part of the mechanics and how it changes a battle outcome. So if you can reinforce somebody with, like literally just bring in 10 players with 56 layers and put in 560 layers into them of 10,000 troops each, and you will literally tank defenses. It's just literally one of the most amazing things about how effective layering is because it's almost an exponential decrease um, that as the layers go up and you get dominated by layers, you're really, you could send whatever you want. You're not, you're not doing any damage. This is interesting because this is where I figured out that I think what we're dealing with with top games in Ebony, uh, and if you're watching, no offense, and please don't wipe me or zero me, but I think it's a little more nefarious than a language barrier. I think it's a little more nefarious than the left hand not talking to the right. I think it's an intentional confusion, fog of war they want to create so that, and it's weird because if you go to their they're, they're, uh, the, the settings, options, there's like a tab that's like how to play, and there's FAQs, 
And this is one of the questions. And it says, will reinforcing tech apply to buildings and battlefield? Yes, as long as it's reinforcing, it would apply. Well, oddly enough, it doesn't. So I feel like there's a little bit of misinformation out there on purpose. The fact that they call in-city and defending two different names, but it's the same thing. Marching and attacking, two different names, but it's the same thing. I think they're trying to sow the uh, confusion, the fog of war, to foster conversation, to make people confused about it, a little bit of that like unknown and how to make it work. And I find that interesting. Um, but uh, I, I think it's intentional. And I think whenever people say, I spoke to CS and they said this, and I'm like, yeah, I don't believe a word of what they say. It's just Ebony doing Ebony things. So uh, this is monster buffs, right, on when attacking, which blows my mind because there are generals in the game that are purely for bossing, Ethel Fled, Caesar, and I'll be in a PvP march and I'll get a rally on me or I'll get a PvP hit or a battlefield, and somebody will hit me with Ethel Fled. And I'm sitting there going, like, that's just a little better than hitting me with Shajar Aldor or, like, one of the gold production generals or Martel out of, like, the subs because their buffs are off. Their buffs are for hitting monsters, which means it's only on when you're hitting monsters. Yes, it's 40% mounted troop attack, but unless you think I'm a freaking Jaggermonger or whatever the hell those things are called, they're off. They're, they're, they're just, you might as well hit me with no general. <coughs> Maybe there's some buffs on the Civ gear um, if they have it or whatever. But honestly, you could put that on any other general and get the same buffs. The monster buffs are only for bossing. It's, it's a luxury to have a general who does that. It means you coin a lot. But for God's sakes, do not hit anybody with an Ethel Fled. You just look really, really uh, like uninterested in the game or just you're not reading. Read the gold box. It says, on monsters. Um, there is a defensive bias in the game. And this is why I built, shifted a little bit towards defense. My in-city buffs are some of the, like, are, are my highest buffs. Uh, and you can go to your, your, your uh, monarch detail and sl slide down and see your actual buffs uh, under detail. And you just slide down under military, uh, attacking, defending buffs. They're all there. Uh, those are your native buffs. Those come from Military Academy. Those come from uh, sub-gens, uh, duty gens. Uh, those are the ones that are that are always on, um, uh, regardless of having gear on. So it's important to see that and understand that this game has a defensive bias. The reason is the following. Fact number one, these are indisputable facts that give defense an edge. The number of troops a keep can hold is infinite. The number of troops you can attack with is limited to under 60 million with the rally and 6 million solo and hasn't increased substantially in years. The biggest increase recently was these new uh, rally generals, uh, Wallenstein, Lysander, um, you know, these guys, uh, uh, Sir Sir Charles or whatever, I forget his name, um, the guy with the curly hair, uh, <laughs> the guy who looks like a girl. Uh, the, this, this is... Um, a mo very modest and mild increase in your rallies capacity. And the biggest I've heard of or seen is people holding two rally halls in Battlefield, uh, in like Shalons, and having both those generals and every single debuff, uh, every single March buff you can, getting to 60 million. Most of the ones you're going to see uh, in All Stars, I, I'm seeing is between 40 and 45 million, the big guys. So um, if that's 40 or 45 million, and my keep has an infinite number of troops it can hold, right? Close to 1.7 billion. I'm going to have a mathematical advantage, a big time mathematical advantage. Second, number, fact number two, the defensive keeps also bring their sub generals with their debuffs and their troop layers. Rallies don't bring either. So either you're hitting somebody with 6 million troops against 1.8 billion, right? Good luck with that. Um, uh, or, uh, and you're bringing your subs and they're bringing their subs, so this done doesn't really apply, or you're hitting them with 60 million, but you're leaving behind all of your debuffs, all of your buff, uh, all of your subgens, so, and, their, and their layers. So that's nine subs, three layers each. That's 27 more layers. That's a lot of layers to leave home. So you need to bring a lot of people to, to a rally to help the layers dilute, dilute out the defensive attack to make a rally that effective. Um, so I always used to give zooms in the past year on my on my server to people to try to get them to you know learn about the game, uh, and I would always ask them what's your what's your most badass general, and they would tell me Electra or Elise or you know Scipio or you know whatever whoever, 
And I would tell them, no, that's not your most badass general. That's not your most important general. The most important general are these two guys right here. These two generals command all 1.8 billion of my troops. And that's significant. Those other generals command at most, if you are the K-40 or Sir Phil or whoever one of those guys are, with a 6 million march, okay, they can command 6 million. And in, in a rally... They'll they'll command 60 million, but their buffs don't affect any more than their 6 million. These guys' buffs affect your entire army. And this should be the first general, because of how important their buffs are for your defense, that you uh, jack up. When I uh, joined RSP with an alt uh, in November, I got a really, really rushed bad keep. No civ gear, like really bad keep. And the first thing I did was go for a full choreo set first thing I did was to jack up defensive meat layers. It was all defense. The defense is the difference. And I think you get the most money, uh, the most value for your money in putting buffs into these two guys because they affect all of your troops. All right? So this is like, this is, this is my troop count, 1.76. I mean, that's, that's a lot of troops for those guys to affect. So you really need to think about that. This is my last All-Stars in January. I was a K-39. Tech power of 120 million. Um, and um, I, that's funny. I first got on. This is my full size. This is my first hit. Uh, I got on. I landed. And then uh, I glitched. The game froze. And then the worst thing I could have done was restart. I restart, got locked out for 10 minutes. <laughs> so in 10 minutes, this is what they all saw a K39 with 21 billion and they came flying at me. Now, I don't think I necessarily won all these. I think the first one I won here because they sent range, which was a mistake. Should have sent siege. Uh, but I did run pretty – I was pretty proud to be a K-39 and run with the big dogs here and run pretty even. Because if you look at this, right, I'm getting a good exchange on my power. Those, these are all points I'm getting. I'm getting, I'm getting 2 point – what is this? 2.9, 3 billion points from the enemy and only giving up 2.7 here. Right. This is the next one. I went way a lot more negative, like minus 500 million here. Um, but again, I'm still only a K39 here with horrible tech power and horrible buffs. But because of the sheer numbers, the mathematical advantage, this advantage here is why I'm actually holding up here. This all happened, by the way, within two minutes. When I came on, I was on fire uh, while well, I was locked out and I'm like freaking out. Right. Um, same thing here. Right. Still running close, but building, knowing that each layer I want to run close. Right. So um, I finished 55th, 53rd, 56th, somewhere like in the 50s for all stars. But I think I was the only K39 to finish in the top 100. And it was because of being a heavy defensive build, because my buffs were focused on defense first. And now that I'm up to K40 and I'm doing a lot more MA5, it's my my offense is coming up fast. Um, and, and I think our alliances results show that. But. Again, understanding the buffs and how important the defense is and the fact that the game skews defensive. When somebody shows me an in-rally buff of 25, 2600, I'm thinking that their defense must have like a 1900% uh, siege attack buff. Like they must, have, they must have given up a lot because there's a finite place to get these buffs and they must have given up a lot to get that number, um, that really high number because, again, the right to hyper-specialize, get a higher number. But I'm not impressed. Another thing... Uh, and I'll go over this in the next video, flats. Flats don't show up as high numbers. Um, I know you guys, it's just people talking, and I'm not here to criticize anybody. But a lot of guys are on the C4 chat, the Discord chats, the mechanics chat, and somebody will throw up a battle report and the buffs, and the first thing they're like, their buffs suck. Look, I get it, guys. It's a dick measuring contest. Everybody has to show that 2300 is not impressive to you anymore. But you want to know what? When I see that, I, th I think of two things. One, I think of an asshole in a Ferrari making fun of somebody for driving a Pinto to his blue collar job. Guys, nobody has, not a lot of people have the hundreds of thousands of dollars to get the 2,700% range attack. Show a little more class. I mean, if you're, if you're, look, if you're going to mock them or criticize it as a, oh, that's why the outcome of the report is, I don't hold that against you. But when I see people literally chasing and hounding people and mocking people, like, you don't look cool to me. I'm sorry. You look kind of like a dick. Second of all, I think it shows a lack of understanding that the absolute high number in a rally means that they gave up a lot on defense. Show me your defense. Show me your defensive buffs now. 
You know, you notice that they always want to show you the big range rally that they have a 2,500% range attack, but they don't want to show you the 1,900 siege attack on defense. So I, I'm just of the mind of, look, guys, just don't beat up on people. It's not classy. You can criticize it in terms of, like, the sciencing of it, and which is the part of the game I love. Um, but, you know, some people don't have the means to spend. So, but one of the things that, uh, speaking to Yuge over an RSP yesterday, uh, was really interesting is that he calculated out that an F2P, F2P player, free-to-player, can make 2,200 range attack. Um, Yuge, I hope you don't mind me sharing that. Uh, so there is hope for for free to play, but the game clearly gives a much bigger window up at the top for the coiners. Um, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be uploading the part two very shortly as well. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, comment, like. Uh, the, again, the only reason I'm asking for comments, likes, or subscribers is that I have to do it on my iPhone with this weird slideshow thing until I can unlock the YouTube editing tools, which they won't let me have until I make a thousand subscribers and have a certain number of views. So um, uh, once I get it, I won't ever bug you again for that stuff. So uh, if you can like subscribe, whatever, um, and hopefully the videos will get better. Uh, lastly, if you guys have feedback, I love, I, I, I appreciate all the love for these videos. You guys have been awesome. It makes me feel a little awkward. Um, but I actually would prefer um, constructive criticism. Tell me how I can make these videos better. When you guys say, Hey, can you cover this? Hey, can you go over this? Hey, can you go over this? I, I love that because then I know I'm actually like meeting a need um, and not, you know, again, not I, for me, it's just all about the game and sharing the knowledge. Thanks guys. Bye.